Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, at 22 hours and 22 minutes into the uh, uh, 5th day of November, 2021, this is the best time to do this. So we're getting started. It is freezing cold outside. It's about 40 degrees. Uh, last night, uh, when I was out here till about 1 o'clock in the morning, it went down to uh, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. We have the uh, vortex sitting over us. It really hasn't gone away. Uh, although there are there are higher level clouds. I was able to look at the uh, aircraft and determine by the aircraft that was coming coming by that uh, uh, that there were higher level clouds because you see the clouds to a certain degree, uh, and you see the clouds because there's no stars in the skies. To determine the height, you have to see what type of planes come by, how high they are, and you know so on and so forth. Uh, if you can hear a plane but you can't see the plane, that means it's in the clouds. That means the clouds are lower down. Uh, all the planes I've seen so, or heard so far I've seen, uh, which means that the clouds are above the aircraft, the, the terms of the altitude of aircraft. You can see what's happening here. Is someone coming in? Lionel does his stuff out of the kindness of his heart. Uh, I do mine because I'm bored. <laughs> there's not a lot of there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of excitement out here. Uh, is waiting for things to happen or not to happen. Right now, I've been able to match everything up with the satellite. Uh, that took me about ten minutes to do. To, to look at the satellite and come up here and sort of match things up, see uh, where the aircraft were. So that's it. For, that's kind of it. I just got to wa- wait and see if nothing for, for nothing to happen. In other words, it needs to go as the uh, uh, the uh, satellite indicates in terms of the overall trend as well. And these aren't projections. These are uh, the tracks of. Uh, of clouds and so on and so forth. If you know where a cloud was, and you see it going in the northeast direction, and you see enough support for that cloud like you're going in the northeast direction, then you expect it to continue going in the northeast direction for at least three hours while well I'm out here. And so that's what I want to see when I come back in. I want to, you know, make sure that nothing really changes from what I saw on the satellite. So I've got the image. From below, I got the image from above, and as long as things remain uh, somewhat consistent, then uh, yay for me. And so that, that there's a lot of time that, that sort of kind of done, sort of sitting out here doing much of nothing. Let's see if I got this right here. I, could, I got a little bit more room on top. So let's see if I can bring this down a little more. Okay. Anyway, that's a better framing. You'll see that I can't see it right now because the, the image is dark and the way the light shines, uh, the light that's providing the, uh, the, the, the light for the environment, uh, you can't really see the image that well. So you kind of have to guess where things, you can see shadows and outlines and this and that, but nothing really specific. So you have to kind of guess to see if the framing is right. So I'm doing this because this is what, how observation works. Observation takes a long time, particularly if you're going to go into to a, a great uh, depth and not just simply do the half hour and move on to something else because you're bored of it. Uh, even if you're bored of something, you have to go deeper in. And that's where uh, we start going deeper in. And this means topics will repeat each other, repeat itself. And it's not because we're saying the exact same thing. It's because we're going further into the in, into the research. We're going further into the explanation. We're doing, so we're doing the deep dive. Uh, and that's what deep dive research is. is you're going beyond what you typically would see in, on news or whatever. This is, I mean, most of the stuff will never pop up on news. I mean, I said, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the history of racism. You know, the, the systemic, you know, we do this because I, we're trying to understand what is systemic racism. And we get to realize that systemic racism uh, 
doesn't really exist. It's more about class. And there's a fundamental history uh, behind this that makes things a lot more complex. Then Uber like that. Ugh. I started a little bit early. It's usually by eleven o'clock, everyone's gone. But I'm getting too cold. I don't think I'll be able to make it till one o'clock in the morning. Um, because you, you, I'm just sitting here. There is. As I said before, there's a lot of rhetoric. There's a lot of creation in terms of the work of a lot of live action role playing. In many cases, new terms. In order to create a disconnection from history, new terms are put up, and you have to understand that sometimes a new term is actually an old term, but just presented in a different way. And this is the same thing with systemic racism. It's a an old pony known as basically class structure, but it's presented in a new way. And, and it's designed to cause conflict. It's designed to make people who are of a particular race very angry, and tell them that their rights have been violated, and they need to go stand up and need to fight back for their rights. Well, what does this do? It creates war, it creates it creates well riots. It creates dis, discontent. It creates chaos. Of course, there are people above who who benefit from this chaos. And so you know, the more violence there is, the more you know disorder is there down below in terms on the average street level. Uh, the more the higher up, the wait. You see, we need we need more security. We need more of a police state. You know, they really crack down on the rules. And what what do we see now with COVID? Crack down on the rules. They've reimagined the police. And so you know, well, we, we, look, we, that means we're going to have we'll be able to do what we want. We we don't have the police anymore. Yes, you do. You have the uh, the CBD police. You have the COVID police. You have the passports. You have all these different things. Oh, sorry, you can't come into our place anymore because, you know, or you can't be our friend anymore because, you know, you don't have a mask on. And, and even though if you might be, you might be double vaxxed and because now that's not good enough, you have to be, the uh, FDA just approved of the fourth vaccine, and so you have to be quadruple vaxxed and, uh, uh, in order to be safe and healthy. Otherwise, you have, you know, sorry, masks and uh, social distance, distance, distancing there, everybody. Uh, look at how many people are following along. It's amazing how people, they're not even questioning it. They know the media lies. They know the media is basically theater, and yet they never ask any questions. But the thing is, what, I, what I've seen in the look on Twitter is that the, under, the undercurrent is, is growing. And I brought up something interesting. They're talking about the metaverse. And he's saying that most people don't know what the metaverse is. And true, most people don't know what the metaverse is. But any nerd does. Every nerd does. They know what the metaverse is. It's been out there in the comic books for a long time now. And I think people don't need to understand that a large chunk of these computer geeks who are like Bill Gates and stuff like that, they grew up on the metaverse. This is Batman, Spider-Man. This is uh, uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Thor. Uh, everything you see out of Marvel Marvel and DC Comics in terms of your theater and movies and so on. So they were always there in the comic books beforehand. So this is the movies are the latest... Uh, iteration of these different things, and they've been uh, these things have these ideas have been around for a long time. Even the way uh, some of these works are sort of created uh, have been around for a long time. It's nothing new, like the so-called systemic racism the, the situation that we have now, uh, which is, comes from the Calvinists, and this is who uh, Bill Clinton is a Calvinist, and is a former Protestant that they believe that God came came. Christ came to earth uh, and had to be crucified for our sins. In other words, it was a punishment by God that God demands blood. He needs, needs this sacrifice in order to be uh, <coughs> appeased. You have an angry God who's going to, uh, you know, take his wrath out on you. You have a wrathful God. A stern father who will whip you straight. And that you have to pay for your punishment, pay for your sins. You have to be punished for your for, for your evilness and any mistake you make. Well, this is what produced these reformatories. This is what produced penitentiaries. 
the entire criminal justice system is based on this. And the the socialists, uh, who were the humanists, evolved from the Catholic Church. They have all evolved from the Catholic Church. The socialism, uh, communism, all of the other isms that are out there, these are all different works of the same humanist understanding. The thing is, socialism is a work, leftism is a work, you know, same with being a, a nationalist, that's a work as well. White supremacy is a work. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean people aren't, aren't going to believe this stuff. They're good. People are going to be in that uh, matrix, if you will. <coughs> and they can't see outside. They think that's what it is. And what it does is it creates a sense that there are people who are down below you. And this is what it does, is that who are sinful, bad. And it's your job to correct this, this bad nature. And of course, they thought, you know, the Catholic Church thought it was evil sins and that you had to, be, that you had to exercise the demons. And so they created these torture chambers. And so that they, they worked out your sins. They got the appropriate punishment. And afterwards, you were executed because you didn't want, they didn't want you to sin anymore. So they killed you. So at your best point, and well, there you go. <laughs> but of course, if you were deemed to be guilty, of any such, you know, heinous crimes, you know, like heresies and so on and so forth. Uh, well, then you'd have to be killed as well because, you know, allowing you to go out and go free is that's simply going to spread the problem. And so sort of like, like these sort of, you know, these things are, uh, these, these spiritual diseases, are, you, you have to deal with them, you have to amputate them, you have to get rid of them. Just like, in, so that, that evolved from the, the Protestants who, didn't do exactly the same thing, but very close to it, but decided that they would need to fix these people. Well, how about you fix these people? You put them into hospitals. You put them into reformatories. You're going to, be, you're going to repair the behavior. You send them to a re-education system where you will reimagine who they are. Beginning to get the picture? So this is the West. But you say, oh, well, you know, that's white supremacy. There you go. Well, if you go to the East and you look at the way the history of the East, you'll find the exact same thing. You'll find that God, their gods are wrathful, need to be appeased. <clears throat> Certain people need to be sacrificed to these gods, and these are people who are on the lower levels. Go, go ask an Indian, not a Native American, but a real Indian. Native Americans are not Indians. They're called Indians because Columbus, when he got here, thought he had reached India. They were, Columbus was, had no intention of settling to North America. He didn't come out to discover the America. He came out because he was convinced that they could sail around the world uh, and reach India from the, from, from the Atlantic side. And he could, but he just didn't do it. <laughs> but he, when he got here, he thought he had discovered India. So this became the Indians. <laughs> It was these sort of these mistakes in history that sort of actually make history itself. But in the East, you ask the Indians, you talk, ask them about this group of people called the Delites. I had people that I knew I sort of talk talk to on a regular basis uh, when uh, when I was ordering se uh, Subway uh, a lot, and, uh, and this is why you have the, the 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 mark on the forehead. The mark on the forehead is a ranking of class. It's, it's where you live, where you stand in society. And their, st their, their standings are based, again, based on their understanding of the nature around them and also the, all the Gnostic nature, the, 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 the wisdom of above. The ones who are said to be enlightened, these are the Brahmin, these are the priestly classes. But there are people who are down below known as the Delites. These are the, from the Jewish perspective, these are the unkosher people. These would be like the Samaritans who weren't kosher. They were considered to be uh, vile, dirty, uh, unclean. And these are people who would not associate with, nor would you touch them. You, these were, uh, and that's all, they're also the deletes, the unkosher people, the Samaritans. They were the untouchables. And so you have this system of division within society, not only based on royalty, but also based on uh, the uh, structures Within, well, see, the royalty were, the royalty were always ordained by God. There was no separation between church and state, uh, or gods, I should say, because there was the, the, 
there's a Christian early Christian sense. There is a a thousand AD post Christian sense. The, the well, thousand AD Christian Christianity kind of ends, uh, and the Western world emerges, and you now have uh, pagan gods uh, and these kings and queens who are ordained by them, but they had a Christian faith. They use a Christian faith. <clears throat> faith. And so what happens is you see that this ranking and division, and they were also always with this understanding of or uh, the royalty being ordained by God, the imperial sense. They were always the slaves. They were always people who were part of this indentured servants. Uh, this was true in, I mean, this was true in Ireland. This is what was done in Ireland. This was done in Scotland where you had people, uh, Irish people, white people working the land. Same thing in Scotland, you had the Scottish who worked the land for a landlord. And of course, the landlord didn't own the land himself. Typically, uh, this is this is before uh, seven, before seventeen hundred A.D. Uh, the papacy, the, the the Vatican owned everything because he was God on earth, and it, this was his entire dominion. So everything on earth belonged to the Pope, and he, of course, he went around with his armies and uh, you know and took over and, and as much land as he could. This this is what the Crusades were about. Crusades, crusades were taking about taking over the Middle East. They took over all the Middle East. They went into Africa. They went into uh, much of what we consider uh, 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 Syria, Israel, Jordan, all these different areas were all taken over. And then they moved on to the east. They moved into 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 Turkey. They moved from Turkey. They moved into uh, uh, China, then into India. And so the the empires. This is by the eighteen hundreds. They had really uh, produced a massive European Western uh, uh, Empire, but even amongst the empire, the people, the the groups within the empire, they weren't they weren't in solidarity. They always always fought with each other. I mean, the fight the fight between the French and the English were legendary. The ones who ended up winning up, this is why the United States is the way it is. The one who won the battle of the empire was uh, Britain, and the United States was an offshoot of Britain. It was a consequence of the British Empire and British control and British rule. There's a song called Rule the Britannia. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves, right? This is the anthem of the British Empire. Because the British Empire had gotten so far and so big that it fundamentally controlled the world. <clears throat> and of course, the French hated this. <laughs> this, is, this is why in, in Canada, well, why is Quebec the way Quebec is? Well, because it's the French sticking its nose in the face of the, of the English. <laughs> it, it, it's, an, it's called an affrontery. Well, you know. <laughs> so there, there was never, and this is the way it is with demons, there's never any peace between demons. It's always infinite warfare. This is the way it's always been. Do change and do something different, and this is what would had to happen. Had, had to happen with the atomic bomb. You couldn't use atomic bomb as, as, as a weapon of con of conquest. Well, the age of conquest ended with the atomic bomb because you now had a weapon that you couldn't use. This the atomic bomb was a weapon of annihilation, so it changed the game. The attitudes didn't change. You always had from from eighteen hundreds on, you know, even before then. That certain people shouldn't live. That the that the earth needed to be cleansed of the deletes, the the untouchables, the the unkosher, the unclean. Back again. <laughs> people coming and going. I'm out of dance school right uh, right here. This is uh, in the same building with uh, that I'm at. Each unit is uh, individual. So, uh, anyways, you always have people throughout the centuries trying to create these utopias, these heavens on earth, uh, to have your cake and eat it too, rather than waiting until after you die and have heaven. They wanted a quick heaven on earth, and they thought they could do social engineering to change how society worked. This is this is true. go study the history of the Chinese Empire. Look at the the Chinese history. You go and 
Chinese history, you'll find the exact same thing. You'll find find the same thing in India. Same thing went on in India with, without any interference from from the uh, from the English. Uh, this is uh, how, in many cases, Alexander the Great uh, operated. This is how he collected, collected, uh, created the the the, um, the uh, Hellenic Empire, which stretched all the way into India. This is how you get Afghans who considered themselves to be Hellenic. And it's because, and the thing is, with the Silk Road and everything like that, even without the conquest, when you had the Silk Road with the trade going from Egypt all the way into China, uh, you had an extensive network of travel that people went back and forth. So you had these traders. But not only did you have the, the Silk Road, but you had trade by sea. You had you know, sh- those the, the shipping lanes. But go back, go take a look at the, at the tales of Sinbad the Sailor. Right? That's not from Europe. That's not, it's not European sailors. They're not so, sailing European waters. These are people in many cases on the Indian Ocean. Or what we call them on the Indian Ocean. So these, you have histories that are not European. So if you want to understand this whole systemic system, you have to go outside what we we'll call the North American or the Western sphere of influence and look at histories that are not included in there. And that's basically your global history, uh, going back into antiquities, going back into uh, early empires and looking at how people behave. Look at, look at what they expected. Look at what they, what they thought they understood to be the truth. And when you look at this, you'll see that, that the conditions today haven't really changed. It's, the views are very much similar. They have different faces, different names. It, and then if we're going to get over the thing to a better world, then it's not about whether somebody is racist or not racist. It's about how we treat each other. And you start beginning by, in many cases, removing your own anger. And removing your own anger and being selfless means that even if you are offended by something, you smile and say thank you. That's the nature of forgiveness. The nature of forgiveness is that peace is always with you. The person who is who, who is who is acting offensive in many ways, cases, they're acting angrily. They're being very critical. These aren't happy people. And so the thing is, is that do we want to become like that? We do. We want to become part of this sort of angry crowd that has no sense but other than anger and attack because this is what's happened everybody's attacking each other and this is we see this with cvd how many people are attacking each other they don't need stormtroopers they don't need big, big militarized police right now they've got the covid police the cvd and who is the cvd this is what happened again in, in, in most of your history of communism and unfortunately communism marxism has a history they've tried it they've, they've tried this several times and every time it turns out the same thing. Is it a planned economy? Yes, but it's not your planned economy. <laughs> Just because something is not a planned economy according to your definition doesn't mean it's con- not communist or not socialist. You don't rule. If, if you were the head of the socialist state, then it would be your planned economy. But because it's not your planned economy that someone else is at the head of the country, of the socialist country, it still is socialism, but it's not your socialism. <laughs> this is how you define it. Because, okay, planned economy, oh, it's not a planned economy. Well, it is. It's just not your plan. And this is what you hear Lionel talking about in terms of his behavior. Well, it, I laid out the blueprint. Here you go. Follow us along. And <laughs> where you go. You'll have this all sewed up. <laughs> but the thing is, again, on Twitter, you know, wow, well, 80 to 90% perfect, effective. Well, we are pretty sure. <laughs> we're pretty sure about our certainty. <laughs> and that's, that's, you know, some of these people, they, they, they produce oxymorons. Oxymoron, because it needs to be defined, because most people are using it wrong. Oxymoron is not a moron. It's not an insult. It is a term that denotes that, that, that something is a contradiction. So if you say, I'm a free slave, 
but you're still a slave. Uh, that's an oxymoron because you are either free or you're a slave. Pretty sure about certainty is an oxymoron because if you have certainty, you're not pretty sure about it. You're certain about it. That's an oxymoron. These things contradict these terms contradict each other. And the thing is, so when you have a liberal pop up and say, "We are the most tolerant people on earth. We are. We define tolerance. We just don't tolerate." And they give you a list of things they don't tolerate because because it's hate speech and hateful. That's oxymoron. That's by, by definition, that's oxymoron. But of course, as soon as you point this out, the liberal is going to be triggered and offended because he's an intellectual and you're not, because no one else but this intellect but this liberal is an intellectual. And he's always right. His worldview is the only correct worldview. And so therefore, you he now has the right to be triggered, and you are now offensive, and he has the right to hit you and attack you because you're being dangerous. Your thoughts are a threat to him. And him is, again, we have to point this out, because of the people who, who, who don't seem to understand that he is anthropomorphic, meaning anthropomorphic, meaning man, the human species, right? A man, human, the species. You understand this? He, man is the species. So he is the pronoun for man, the species, anthropomorphic. It doesn't have to be gender. For those of you who uh, are, are trying to be pronoun correct, we need to be pronoun correct. These people are idiots who, by definition, are idiots because they don't understand the, anthrop the anthropomorphic pronoun. Anthropomorphic, human, he. Man is the species. Not the gender. He. Him. His. It applies to both genders. This cannot be understood by those who are supposedly woke on the left. Anyways, this is the, this is the history of systemic racism. We got into a little little deeper than we did the day, the, the day before. Uh, we had a bit, little bit of uh, breaks in between because <laughs> we had a lot of traffic. Uh, but it's getting cold, and I'm going to go in and warm myself up. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.